Question one: Give an explanation about Tongye Chon Stream. Tongye Chon Stream is a long waterway that goes from the west to the east. It is 8.4 meters long and had another name during the Joseon Dynasty, Gyeon. This stream was put into a big restoration project in 2003, but many people were not happy about it. However, after it opened in 2005, it has become one of the most popular places for tourists and locals to come and enjoy. This stream has been through a lot since it was named Gyeon during the reign of the third king, King Taejong. The king fixed the area to make it into a drainage system because of many houses that were being built around this area. It then changed its name to Tongyecheon during the Japanese colonial period. It was also hard to keep the stream in good shape since there was no money. Then, after the Korean War, many people started to move into Seoul and make small houses next to the stream. This polluted the stream due to a lot of trash, junk, and other household refuse that was being dumped into the stream. Then, in 2003, there was a big project to get the stream back to its former glory and to restore it back to its original beauty. Now, everyone enjoys the peaceful and wonderful waterway when they visit the stream. Question 2. Tell us about Jeju's volcanic island and one of the lava caves on Jeju Island. Jeju's volcanic islands and lava tubes were designated as a UNESCO World Natural Heritage because of its natural beauty, unique volcanic landforms, and ecology. The three natural wonders are Mount Halasan, Songsan Ilchulbong Peak, also known as Sunrise Peak, and Komun Odum Lava Tube. Halasan Mountain is the highest mountain in South Korea. Its diverse and unique volcanic ecology and topography makes it even more outstanding. It also has Bengnokdam Crater Lake at its peak. Songsan Ilchulbong Sunrise Peak has a wondrous sunshine and landscape. Gomun Orum's lava tube system has 360 volcanic cones scattered throughout Jeju Island. Jeju has numerous lava tubes. I will introduce Gimnong and Manjang's lava tube caves. The caves had originally been connected but divided into two tubes because of a cave end. Manjanggul Lava Tube is one of the largest lava tubes in the world at about 7.4 kilometers long. On the other hand, Gimyeonggul Lava Tube is about 700 meters long. Inside the cave, you can see various kinds of lava formations such as lava stalactites, lava stalagmites, lava benches, and lava stone pillars. Question 3. Describe traditional house styles in Jeju and Onneung Island. The traditional house styles of Jeju and Onneung Island are quite different from the mainland because of its weather conditions. The traditional house in Jeju is very low and has a stone wall around it instead of a gate. The wind is very strong in Jeju, so people made stone walls to block the strong winds from blowing into the house. They fixed the roof by tying it with straw ropes to prevent the roof from being blown away. To enter the traditional house in Jeju, you need to pass the main gate known as Ole. The gate also helps block the wind from coming into the house. Also, there is a storage called Kupang in Jeju. It is literally a storage where you can keep food inside. Onungdo is a well-known snowy island. The special outer wall in Onung Island is called Udegi. A shingle-roofed house is built to protect against wind and snow. Question 4. Do you have any recommended national parks in Korea? 
Wudingsan Mountain National Park is the most recently designated national park in Gwangju, Korea. It is located in Gwangju, Dongnam Province. There are various things to enjoy while you are there, but the main attraction is the columnar joints, which are beautiful and magnificent. It is amazing and wonderful how the columnar joints are created by volcanic activity on the mountain. That is why Budengsan Mountain is called God of Stone Pillars. You can also enjoy watching the beautiful silver grass in fall. Question 5. Compare the east and west coast. Korea has east, west, and south coast. I will explain the differences between the east and west coast. Compared to the west coast, the east coastline is simple and deep. The waves are much stronger and most of east coast has sandy beaches. So the east coast is a good place to enjoy swimming and sunbathing. On the other hand, the west coast is different from the east. The west coast has a wide range of mudflats, which is called getbol in Korean. It functions to purify the pollution of the sea. Mudflats also help to prevent coastal erosion. It also purifies and dredges the pollution in the sea. Mudflats offer a vast living space for various creatures like crabs, shells, and starfish. Land reclamation projects are ongoing in the mudflats of the West Coast. The good thing about it is we can build more buildings and infrastructures there. On the other hand, this can also damage the coral, marine life, and ecosystems. So, we need to bear in mind both the pros and cons of developing mudflats. One famous beach in the West Coast is Gokji Beach. Compared to other west beaches, it has soft and fine green sand on the beach. That's why it is a very famous tourist destination. Question 6. What kinds of theme parks are there in Korea? Theme parks are where entertainment, joyful events, rides, and attractions are located in one location with a certain theme for people's enjoyment. Well-known parks are Lotte World and Everland in Korea. There are lots of theme parks in Korea. There are too many to list, but I can list a few in Seoul, Gyeonggi-do, and other provinces. Seoul Namsam Park, Seoul Children's Grand Park, Lotte World, Guam Park, and Gildong Ecological Park are some theme parks in Seoul that come to mind. In Gyeonggi-do, Petit France, Ains World, Everland, and Paju Peaceland are great places that I recommend. Some more beloved theme parks are Somjinggang River Train Village, Gunsan Jinpo Maritime Theme Park, 5.18 Memorial Park, National Redemption Park, and Dongdong Jin Hourglass Park. I hope all these theme parks in Korea can play great roles for promotion and branding. Question 7. Describe the types of caves in Korea. The caves in Korea are normally classified into three types. Limestone caves, sea caves, and lava caves. One of the most famous limestone caves is Gosu Cave in Tanyang Chuncheongdo. We can see various cave creatures inside of Tanyang Cave. It is also known for strange rocks and bizarre stone formations. Jeju Island has around 80 lava caves because it is a volcanic island. One of the most famous lava caves on Jeju Island is Mandang Cave. Mandang Cave is said to be the longest lava cave in the world. The inside is rough and dangerous, so expect to spend long hours there. You can observe various animals and insects there. Gwangmyeong Cave is in Gwangmyeong, and it is very close to Seoul. 
When Korea was colonized by Japan, the Japanese plundered the mine, and Korean mine workers had to work in harsh conditions inside the cave. So it has some historical background too. The cave reopened in 2011 and now is open to the public as a tour site. Todang Cave is in Samtok Gangwondo. It has many underground water waves and stalactite formations. It is also the largest cave among Korea's limestone caves. Question 8. Where are some famous hot springs in Korea? Several places are famous for their hot springs in Korea. I would say Onyang, Suwanbo, and Yusong Hot Spring are representatives in Korea. Onyang Hot Spring is in Asan, Chungcheong, Namdo, which is one of the oldest hot springs in Korea. Its water contains high levels of alkaline, which is very good for the skin. This hot spring has existed since the Baekje Dynasty. And King Sejong from the Joseon Dynasty stayed here to cure his eyes. Suwon Bo Hot Spring in Chungju, Chungcheong Namdo is the first natural hot spring in Korea. Its water contains large amounts of sulfur and radium. King Tejo from the Joseon Dynasty often visited here to cure his dermatitis. There's an area called Yusong in Daejeon City. In Yusong District, you can find a lot of hot spring-related theme parks. They have built new modern accommodations and facilities to enjoy hot springs. These days, the combination of theme parks and hot springs are attracting people and becoming popular. For example, Sodak Water Park in Gangwado, Bugok is very popular.